Theology. Yes, hello there and welcome. Now I want us to look at a KCSE 2023 paper and let's begin uh, from the first question. So the first question is asking, you are provided with the following materials and apparatus. So the first thing is a prepared slide labeled E containing transverse section through a plant organ. So the first part of this uh, statement is telling us that we have been given a slide. So let's just remind ourselves the types of slides that we have in biology that we studied in Form 1. So remember in Form 1 we looked at two different types of slides. So the first slide we looked at was a permanent slide and then the other slide was a temporary slide. So for permanent slide, remember these are slides which have been manufactured in the factories and they can be used over a very long period of time. So they are well prepared in the factories and then sold to the retailers, maybe for example your school. So these are now the permanent slides which can be used over a very long period of time without the specimen getting destroyed. So the other type of slide, remember we say that we have another slide which is now the temporary slide. So for the temporary slide, remember we say that this is a slide which is only prepared and used in a specific lesson or a specific biology class only. That is a temporary slide. So for the temporary slide, like as soon as you have used that slide for the current biology practical, so it is easy for the specimen to go bad or the specimen to get destroyed, which means that you won't be able to use it in the next experiment. So that is a temporary slide. So for the permanent, remember this is a slide which can be used over a very long period of time maybe term, maybe an year, or maybe 10 years. But for a temporary slide, this is a slide which is only prepared in the laboratory for the current biology lesson or the current laboratory work only. So for this temporary slide, remember also in Form 1 we say that we have four different approaches or four different methods or four different procedures for preparing a temporary slide. So the first procedure, remember we say that we must undertake what is called sectioning. So for this sectioning, this is cutting very tiny pieces of the specimen or the part of the specimen which is to be observed in the microscope. So that is sectioning. And for sectioning, you can use a scalpel and the best, the best apparatus to use in this sectioning, remember I said it is a microtome. So that is the apparatus which, which is called a microtome, which is the best apparatus for undertaking this process which is called sectioning in preparing a temporary slide. So after sectioning, remember the next step we said, we said that the next step was treating. So for this treating, you add glacial ethanoic acid to the, to the specimen in order to preserve the parts of the specimen. So apart from that, remember we said that the next step was staining, and then for this staining, we stain the specimen so that the different organelles or the different parts of the organelle can be visible and be distinguishable. So for the... For the staining, remember we say that we, we can use iodine, which is brown, and, or we can use methyl blue, or we can use also eosin, among others. And then lastly, the last method, um, or the last procedure for preparing a temporary slide, remember we say that there is mounting. So for this mounting, this is now placing the specimen on the slide, and then you cover it with the cover slip. So those are the methods of preparing a temporary slide, and then don't again forget that we have the two different types of slides which is the permanent slide, and the next one is the temporary slide. So apart from that, the other part of the question is telling us also about the different sections that we have. So remember this question was saying that uh, the part of the specimen we have been given, it has been cut through transverse section. So like we can look at these different types of sections also that we studied in Form 1. So remember we say that we have two different types of sections, whereby the first one we say that we have a transverse section and then the other section remember we said we have a longitudinal section so the other name of the transverse section can also be called a lateral section and then longitudinal section just from the word longitude we studied in geography and social studies these are lines which uh, which emerge from top to bottom of the earth but now here in biology a longitudinal section this is when now we cut a specimen uh, from top to bottom. So if you cut the specimen from top to bottom, that is a longitudinal section. If we cut the specimen across like that, that is a transverse section or a lateral section. So for those two different types of sections, remember, don't forget, those are the two different types of sections that we are going to deal with here, the longitudinal and the transverse section. But now this question specifically was saying that the specimen was cut uh, by the use of a transverse section through a plant organ. 
So the next part of the question is saying uh, you should be given a plant organ, yes, a transverse section, and then also access to light microscope with at least the low power and the medium power objective lenses. So those are what you are supposed to be given a prepared slide and then also a transverse section through a plant organ and then after that access to a light microscope with at least a low power magnification objective lens and then medium power objective lens. So for this um, objective lenses we have been told that the low power objective lens was times 4 and then the medium power objective lens was times 10. So the eyepiece magnification in this case, the eyepiece magnification was, uh, it was times 10 also. So low power is times 4, uh, medium power was times 10, and then eyepiece magnification also was times 10. So part A of the question is now asking, observe the section under low power and medium power objective lenses using the light microscope, and then fill the portion labeled F in the plan diagram below. So as you can see, this, this is the portion label F that you are supposed to fill. So in this question, what you are exactly supposed to do or what the student was supposed to do, the student, first of all, was to go and observe uh, the specimen, the specimen which was provided by the examiners. So they are to observe this specimen and then they get to capture the field of view. Then after that, you come and fill this part F. So remember, this part, this, this whole thing which F uh, can be found this is a field of view but in this field of view we have only been told to fill only the part labeled F so remember the field of view should be that spherical uh, spherical place that you can be able to see while looking down the eyepiece but now in this question is saying yes after looking at the microscope you have seen the field of view to be uh, circular but we should only uh, like in that circular place that we saw in the field of view we should only fill the part F so you are only to extract something like that and come and fill in that part labeled F of the field of view. So, like after drawing that part F from what you had observed uh, using the eyepiece, uh, eyepiece lens of the microscope, you are now to label the parts. Because in biology, if you only draw and you don't label your diagrams, everything is going to be wrong. So all diagrams in biology must be labeled. So after extracting that part F from the field of view that we observe from the microscope and read there so it was a must for the students also to label all the parts from the epidermis from the ground tissues and also from the vascular bundles in order to get everything correct so again remember in biology you must label the diagram if you don't label the diagrams in biology everything that you have done is wrong and also the rules in drawing in biology are very important so always use a pencil label using a uh, Never use arrows when labeling, only use a dash or a line when labeling, etc. So after doing that, that was what the question was asking and the students were getting their full three marks after doing that. So Roman 2 was asking, calculate the magnification of the image observed under low power objective lens. So you calculate magnification under low power objective lens. So like as we know from Form 1 Knowledge Microscopy, you know that magnification is equal to eyepiece uh, magnification times the objective lens magnification. So that is how to calculate the magnification for a microscope. So like in this case, we are being asked that we should calculate the magnification using the low power objective lens magnification. So having written the formula, so you see that we now apply everything uh, from the magnification of the objective to the eyepiece, and then you calculate the magnification in this case. So for the low power objective lens, remember we are told it was times 4. And then for the eyepiece magnification, also remember it was times 10. So here, like what you are supposed to do, we are to take the times 4 for the low power objective lens, we multiply it by times 10 for the eyepiece. And then the total magnification in this case was times 40. So that was the total magnification as what the question was asking. Now, in this calculation of magnification, you should also be very careful because if you omit the X sign before the 4 and the X sign before the 10 for the eyepiece and the X sign before the answer, the total magnification, you are going to get it wrong. So for you to calculate magnification in a microscope or for a hand lens, that X sign must be there. So never omit that X sign in order to say only 
4 times 10 is equals to 40. You are going to get it wrong. The best and the right way to write this thing should be times or x4 times x10. The answer then you get is x40. If you omit the x in magnification calculation, everything you have done is going to be wrong. So you should be very careful during this calculation. So the question next, which is uh, letter B, is asking, with the reference to one observable feature, state the class of the plant from which the organ was obtained. So the reference from one observable feature from what we observed in the microscope or in the field of view of the microscope. So, um, state the class of the plant from which this organ we have drawn in F was obtained. So, this part of the plant was obtained from from class monocotyledonae. So, it belongs to class monocotyledonae. And that is what the question is asking. So, in reference to an observable feature, state the class of the plant from which the organ was obtained. So, it was obtained from class monocotyledonae. But why should we say it was obtained from class monocotyledonae and not class dicotyledonae? Because remember, in plants, we only have two classes, whereby plants can be classified as either monocots, being in class monocotyledonae or dicots being in class dicotyledonae. So like for in this case, it is class monocotyledonae. It is because, as you can look at the diagram, so the vascular bundles are scattered on the ground tissue. That is the first information that we did collect when observing. The vascular bundles, bundles are scattered on the ground tissue or the cortex. Apart from that, you can see that what we observed in the field of view did not have a pit. So there was no pit anywhere in the diagram that we observed. So since there was no pit, then this cannot be a dicotyledonous plant. It is a mass, it is a monocotyledonous plant. It's because monocotyledonous plants do not have a pit. Then apart from that, lastly, we can say that what we observed did not have a cambium. So there was no cambium in the diagram that we observed. So since there was no cambium in the diagram that you observed, so this can never be a dicotyledonous, but it must be uh, from a monocotyledonous plant. Because for a monocot, remember, the vascular bundles are scattered. After the scattering, they don't have pith and they also do not have a cambium, which is used for secondary growth for the plant. So don't forget that. So going to the next question, uh, or before we go to this question, we can try to look at the different um, stems that we have, that is for the monocot stem and the dicot stem, so that we get to know now the contrast between the monocot stems and the dicot stems. So for example, you can look at this, this is a monocotyledonous stem, and if you can look at the ground tissues, the ground tissue is there, yes, but the vascular bundles are all over scattered on the diagram as we can see. So since the vascular bundles are scattered, on this uh, on this part of the plant then this then supports that this is a monocotyledonous and not a dicotyledonous if you look at the dicotyledonous below it you're going to see that the vascular bundles are found in a ring fashion they are surrounding the pit so the vascular bundles are in a ring fashion and then they are surrounding the pit and in the vascular bundles you're going to realize that we also have a cambium which is used for secondary growth so that is how now you differentiate between now a monocotyledonous uh, stem and a dicotyledonous stem. You just check the vascular bundles, you check the pith, and then finally you check the cambium. So let's now go to the next part of the question, which was part C. So part C was asking, name the plant part from which this section was obtained. So name the plant part from which this section was obtained. So this section of the plant was obtained from a monocotyledonous stem. That is now the answer. If you only say that this part was obtained from a stem, you're going to get it wrong because this part of a plant is not obtained from a stem. It is obtained from a monocotyledonous stem. If you only say that it is stem, remember also the dicots possess a stem. They have a stem. So if you are not specific and say it is obtained from a stem, the answer you're going to get is wrong. So that answer is wrong. But you must specify and say that it is obtained from a like a monocotyledonous stem and then you are good to go and you are correct. So part D of the question was asking, state two precautions one should take to ensure the safety of slide during observation 
under the microscope. So what are these precautions that you should take? So the first one you can say, always make sure that the slide is held in position using the clips. So the clips of the microscope always make sure that they are holding the slide in position so that the slide cannot be able to slide off, fall and then uh, be broken or maybe the specimen will not be able, be able to move inside that slide. So you should all, always take note. Then apart from that you can say that always use the fine adjustment knob uh, with the medium and the high power objective lenses. So never use the course adjustment knob with the medium or the hyper objective lenses because these ones may easily damage or break the, the slide in use. So always use a fine adjustment knob when you want to focus using this, uh, these two objective lenses. So the other one you can say that always make sure or always uh, gently use the course adjustment knob when lowering the objective lens towards or away from the slide. So like never be rough and just, and just wind it just once like that. It may easily go down and damage or break the, or break the slide. So when using the objective lenses and when using the course adjustment knob, always make sure to gently lower and gently raise the objective lenses using the course adjustment knob in order to bring the image into rough focus. So this one also helps not to destroy the slides being used in position. And then we can also say never touch the part of the slide which is being used for... Uh, or rather you can say never touch the part of the slide containing the specimen with bare hands because this will, will easily damage the specimen. So remember the procedures for preparing a temporary slide, we say that there is staining and then there is also, um, there is also fixation. So by this fix fixation we say that this is like we are treating the specimen so that the parts of the specimen will be distinct, will be turgid, etc. So if you touch the specimen with your bare hands, you may first of all impurities may be in your hand, second of all your finger may also damage the part of the specimen which is to be observed. So never touch the part of the slide which contains the specimen under, as this may lead to distortion of what you're supposed to, be obs uh, to observe. So question letter E was asking, state how each of the following parts of the light microscope contributed to the clarity of the section observed. So how did these different parts of the microscope contribute to the clarity of what was observed that we drew in F. So the first one was mirror. So what this question is asking, this question is just asking what are the functions of these parts of the microscope. That is all the question is asking, the functions of the different parts of the microscope, whereby the first one you have been told is the mirror. So what's the function of the mirror? So the mirror played a role in reflecting light onto the slide found under the stage for the clear observation of the specimen. That was it just to reflect the light to pass, through the, to pass through the specimen for clear observation. So that was the function of the mirror though. Then the next one was the diaphragm. What was the function of the diaphragm? So remember diaphragm regulates the amount of light passing through the condenser. So the diaphragm was able to regulate the amount of light which was passing through the condenser for easier observation of the specimen. And that was the answer that you are supposed to give in this case. So the next one was condenser. So what was the function of the condenser? So the condenser played a role in concentrating the light on the specimen for clear observation. So that was exactly the, like what you are supposed to answer in this question. This question was only testing if you know and understand the functions of the different parts of the microscope. And by the first one was the mirror, the diaphragm, and finally was the condenser. So the next question is asking, you are provided with the following materials and reagents. So the first one was, the first one was half a portion of raw banana. The next one is three beakers labeled G, H, and J. Uh, so whereby in beaker G we are being told that it contained 50 ml of dilute hydrochloric acid. Beaker H we are told that it contained 50 ml of distilled water. And then beaker J we are told that the beaker was empty. So apart from being given that, uh, we have been given a scalpel, we have been given a spatula or a pair of forceps, 
we have been given a white plain paper or a white tile and then finally we have been given a stopwatch or a means of timing so those were the apparatus that we were given in this experiment and then let's now proceed so we are being told that when some plant tissues are exposed the enzymes on the exposed surface are able to react with oxygen so if we expose some parts of the plant in in an open atmosphere so the enzymes contained in this part of the plant are able to react yes with the atmospheric oxygen that is just the normal thing that happens so then you have been told using the provided materials investigate the enzyme oxygen reaction by using the procedures below so from the apparatus now we are going to the procedure so the first bit of the procedure is telling us slice off about two millimeters from the exposed end of the raw banana and discard the slide the slice now that is it so slice about two millimeters of the exposed end of the raw banana and discard the slice so why are we slicing off the tip of the banana and discarding it this is because this part may be in contact with the atmosphere thereby it may have acquired different impurities from the atmosphere so if you use this part of the banana maybe you are going to get wrong readings or wrong answers therefore it is advisable to cut off this part and discard it because it may be prone or it may have gotten into contact with the different environmental impurities which may distort uh, the readings of our experiment so that's why it's being discarded so after doing that the next bit of the procedure we're being told slice another piece about one centimeters wide from the remaining banana to use it in the investigation so that is exactly how it happens so you slice about one centimeters of the remaining banana so that that is what we are now going to use in our experiment so part three of the question is asking is saying divide the portion obtained in roman 2 the previous so divide the portion obtained in roman 2 about three uh like in about three parts so the first one was part a part b and part c so the one centimeter part that we cut so we divide it into three part a part b and part c so roman 4 is saying remove the pill from the portion a so we remove the pill uh, from the portion a that we are just separated a b and c so remove the pill so remember the pill is that the outer covering like maybe for example the epidermis so we remove the pill from portion a and then we cut the pill into three pieces and immediately drop all the three pieces into beaker labeled g so remember the beaker label G, this was the beaker which contained 50 ml of hydrochloric acid. So you place them in beaker label G containing hydrochloric acid. And then we are being told that uh, we obtain only the pills without the remnants of the banana flesh. So that is exactly what you should do. You should get the pills and then throw them in beaker G which contains uh, hydrochloric acid. So Roman 5 is saying, repeat the procedure in 4 with pills from portion B, but now we put now these pills from portion B in the beaker H. And remember the beaker H contains 50 ml of distilled water. So in A, we, like we took the pills from A and threw it in 50 ml of hydrochloric acid. And then now for the B, we cut off the pill and then we, uh, we took these pills into 50 ml of Mm, distilled water and then for the portion c we have been told that uh, we throw so we take beaker j and then we put the pills of the portion c so for portion a ziko kwa hydrochloric acid for portion b ziko kwa distilled water for portion c remember beaker j did not have anything beaker j was empty and then roman 6 is saying leave the setup for about five minutes and observe the inner surface of the banana pills in each beaker so we time our stopwatch for five minutes then after five minutes you are going to make observation in the different beakers that we have the one which contained hydrochloric distilled water and empty and then we make the observation so now part a roman one of the question was asking record the observations made in each case so remember in all experiment there must be a heading there must be apparatus there must be procedure whereby procedure must always be followed by observations so that's why the question is asking record the observations made in each case so after conducting this experiment so the observations that were to be made in this case so the first observation for the beaker labeled g so for the beaker labeled g that contained hydrochloric acid remember so the observation is going to be that uh, so we are going to observe some white 
yellow color of the of the pills was observed so some white yellow colors of the pills were observed then remember for observation never give a reason don't say it's because the enzymes were being denatured the question is only asking you give observation if you give the reason the whole thing is going to be wrong the only observation here to be made and that should be the answer is that some white yellow color of the pills were observed and that is it you put a full stop there so the next one was part h so for the part h you see that there were some slight brown coloration or browning of the pills that was about the pills in that we put in distilled water there are some slight brown coloration or we can just say browning of the pills were able to be observed and then for the beaker j which was empty the pills were only uh, put in beaker j which was empty so you can see that more browning of the pills uh, was observed so yeah more browning of the pills was observed so in hydrochloric acid remember the pills turned yellow in color for H, uh, which contained distilled water, there was some slight browning. And then finally, for the beaker that was empty, more browning of the pills was able to be observed. So question, Roman 2 is asking, um, account for the observations made in beaker H and beaker J. So account for the observations that were made in beaker H and beaker J. So for the beaker H, which contained distilled water, remember we say that there are some slight brown coloration or browning of the banana pills. So why was this so? It is because the water had diluted the enzymes in the banana pill. So the water had diluted the enzymes in the banana pill, uh, which led to very low amount of oxygen reacting with the enzymes in the banana pill, leading to less browning or um, low amount of browning in the banana pill. And that is the answer. So most of the water had diluted the enzymes, leaving very low amount of enzymes in the banana peel. So this very low amount of enzymes in the banana peel were now able to react with the atmospheric oxygen, leading to very low amount of brown coloration of the banana peel. So the next part of the question is asking beaker J. Remember beaker J was the beaker that was empty. So what happened in beaker J? So for the beaker J, you can say that there was more browning. That's what we said in the previous there was more browning but why were there more browning it's because most enzymes in, in the banana peel were able to react with the <coughs> most enzymes in the banana peel were able to react with the atmospheric oxygen therefore leading to the brown coloration of the banana and that is it that is just how you account for these two so in the first one water diluted most of the enzymes leaving very low amount of of enzymes which reacted with oxygen leading to low browning or less browning but in the beaker j there was there was no water therefore since there was no water all the enzymes the banana peel were able to react with oxygen therefore which led to even more browning of the of the banana peels so let's now go to roman 7 it's saying <clears throat> so roman 7 is like another part of the procedure so it's saying, using the spatula or pair of forceps that were provided, remove the peel from each beaker. So we remove the peel from each beaker and expose the sets of peel separately on a plain paper or a white tile. So you remove the peels using a pair of forceps from the beaker and expose them in a white tile and then make observations. So the other part of the procedure is saying, leave them for further five minutes and make observations. So after removing them from the beaker, we, we place them in the white tile for about five minutes and then after five minutes we now make the observations in this experiment. So part B, Roman 1 was asking, record the observations made on the pills from beaker H and beaker J. So from beaker H, remember it had the distilled water, then the banana peel slightly turned brown in color. So what observations will now be made when this, these banana pills from beaker H are now uh, put into open atmosphere? So what will happen is that now the enzymes which are found in the banana pills from beaker H, they are now going to again react with atmospheric oxygen and now turn even more brown in color. It is because most of these enzymes are now reacting with atmospheric oxygen leading to now the more brown coloration. So the next one is asking uh, beaker J. So for the beaker J, we can see that the beaker, since 
the banana peels from Bika J were already in the open atmosphere. Placing them still again in the open atmosphere will not lead to any observable change. And therefore, for the banana peels from Bika J, we'll say that no observable color change or any reaction was observed. It's because it is still in the atmosphere, as from the previous question that we said, it was placed in an open beaker. So Roman 2, part B, is asking, account for the observations on the surfaces of the pills from beaker G and J after further five minutes. So from beaker G and J after further five minutes. So from beaker G, we see that there'll be no, no color change. Because, remember, enzymes are destroyed or denatured by low or high pH. And placing these banana peels in a beaker containing hydrochloric acid, the hydrochloric acid destroyed or denatured all the enzymes in the banana peel. As it destroyed all the enzymes in the banana peel, therefore, all the enzymes died and could not be able to react with oxygen. Therefore, for the beaker G, we'll say that there'll be no observable color change because most of the enzymes found in the banana peels that were in G were destroyed or, yes, had been denatured or were destroyed. So the next one was J. Uh, so for J, remember, for the pills which were found in J, remember, they were in an open beaker, therefore they reacted with excess oxygen. So after placing them out for about, again, five minutes, it was just like we're taking them from this atmosphere to the next atmosphere. So there was no observable change that was observed for these banana pills from Bika J because already they had turned brown to symbolize that they had already reacted with maximum amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. So part C of the question was asking, suggest a suitable pH for the enzymes found on the surface of banana peel. So a suitable pH of the enzymes which are found in the banana peel. So the pH here is neutral. Why did you say that the pH is neutral? It's because when these banana peels were placed in an, placed in an acidic pH, remember, most of the enzymes got destroyed and got denatured. That's why the banana peels turned color into yellow and some turned into white. It's because most of the enzymes were destroyed by the low pH of the hydrochloric acid. But when placed them, uh, but when placed in distilled water, which was pH 7, and also the open atmosphere, which, which has a neutral pH, like you can see that they were able to react with oxygen to form a brown coloration. Therefore, for our answer, the suitable pH for the banana peels to thrive, the suitable pH is neutral. So letter D of the question was asking, suppose the pills in setup J were initially boiled for five minutes. So if we now took the pills which were placed in the open beaker J, and then we boiled them for five minutes, then Roman 1 part is asking, suggest the, observ suggest the observations that would have been made. So the observation that would have been made was that there would be no color change. So the pills will, the, yeah, the banana pills will not show any color change. So Roman 2 was asking, explain the observations made in D, Roman 1 above. So the observations to be made here was that there will be no color change because high temperatures denature and destroy enzymes. So since high temperatures denature and destroy enzymes, this will prevent the enzymes found on the banana peel to react with the atmospheric oxygen in order to show any further brown coloration or color change of the banana peels. So remember, high temperatures destroy or denature the enzymes. Biology.